Good morning, everyone. I am your host, Olivia Cohen, always fixing my hair at the last moment, coming in live from the Durfner Judaica Museum here at the Hebrew Home. And this is Good Morning Hebrew Home. Uh, today is Friday, November 6th, and the time is 10.33 a.m. Uh, just to start off with some Good Morning Hebrew Home updates for you all. Uh, Lisa will be the new Friday host and I will be the host on Thursdays. And very exciting, we will be having a new Tuesday host that will be joining us soon. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, the Lisa Olivia switch will take place next week. Um, so plan to see me on Thursday and Lisa's face on Friday. Uh, let's take a look at the weather in our neck of the woods um, this for today and this weekend. Uh, today will be sunny, high, temperatures will be high, 69 degrees. And this was a, a term that they really liked at, on the Weather Channel. Winds will be light and variable. So it'll be light and variable today, everybody. Saturday, same thing, sunny. Uh, temperatures will be high 72 degrees and again winds will be light and variable so it's gonna vary uh, Sunday a mainly sunny sky we can all plan for our temperatures will be high 71 degrees and again winds will be light and variable so it'd be a variable weekend for us all everybody Let's move to this day in history. We got a bunch of presidential stuff on this day in history not surprising I'm, I'm sure. Some of you may be watching and glued to the TV, and some of you may not, and some may be in between. I think I'm a little in between. I go through spurts of following everything and then not following everything. So wherever you fall, um, hope you're tuning in today to watch us. Uh, so this day in history, November 6th, 1947, NBC's Meet the Press debuts. It was uh, U.S.'s longest running TV show. I actually watch that sometimes. 1996, Bill Clinton wins a resounding victory over Republican Bob Dole and will be the president of the United States for four more years in the White House. Some more presidential stuff. In 2008, world leaders send congratulations to Barack Obama. So world leaders send congratulations to Barack Obama on his presidential win, including the Iranian president. And this was the first ever official message of goodwill that has been presented to an American leader by Iran. Mr. Obama has offered unconditional dialogue with Iran about its nuclear program. And the president of Iran called for the U.S. president to implement a foreign policy of non-interference. So it was a first time for um, a congratulations to a U.S. president. Uh, 2012, United States U.S. presidential election takes place and President Barack Obama and Republican opponent Mitt Romney face off in the U.S. presidential election. And while the results are initially close, Obama was re-elected and won the majority of the vote. And then non-presidential related uh, history happening today. In 2013, uh, in France, Napoleon's will was auctioned off. I thought that was interesting. It was announced that a copy of Napoleon's will would be auctioned off in Paris, France. The copy, although not written by Napoleon, was written by his close advisor, and it is thought that it could sell for more than 100000 at auction. So interesting stuff today on November 6th. Also today, and also interesting, it is Nachos Day, everybody. I don't know how you guys feel about nachos, but I sure do love them. Um, so it's Nachos Day. Uh, it's also Love Your Lawyer Day. So if you have, <laughs> Deacon George liked that one. So if you have a lawyer that you love, it's the day to love them. Um, it's also Fountain Pen Day. I don't know if there's any fountain pen users out there. I used to remember as a child really wanting one. I thought it was so cool. I wanted that in a quill pen. So if there's a quill pen day, I will let you all know. And it is also saxophone day. So those smooth, Ken, did Kenny G play the saxophone or the clarinet? Oh. Uh, I forget now. If anyone knows, let us know in the comments down below um, or give us a call. Speaking of that, we haven't had any viewer mail in a really long time. 
our mailbox, which is in perfect sight. Thank you, Antonique. Um, has had its flag down for a really long time. And I'd really love to open that up. So if you could give us a call, even just to say hi, we'd love to hear from you. Just pick up any phone here in the home and dial 2813, give us a call, say hi. We'd love to share it live on the air. Uh, some other November notes that are going on. The flower of the month is a chrysanthemum. I like chrysanthemums. I think they're very pretty. The birthstone of the month is a topaz citrine. So it's like that yellowy topaz. The astrological signs for this month. So it's Scorpio, which goes from October 24th to November 21st. Um, and then it's the Sagittarius comes in in like the end of November. That's where my dad, my dad and I are both Sagittarius. So November 22nd, all the way to December 21st. So we got two astrological signs for this month. And if anyone's interested in just the moon, the moon this month is called the beaver moon, be uh, frosty moon. I don't know why, but I thought that was very interesting. Let's get into birthdays for today. I printed them out. So I'm just gonna switch gears to paper. Uh, resident birthdays for today and this weekend. We have Florence K for today, happy birthday. For tomorrow, November 7th, we have uh, William A, happy birthday. And for Sunday the 8th, we have Loretta S, Francis D, and Terry L. Happy birthday to all. So that is our November birthdays for residents. And now we're gonna move on to staff. And if I can read this, this is such small print. Um, happy birthday to Edgar, uh, Winifred, and Leonora. All our birthdays for today are Friday birthdays for staff. Moving on to tomorrow, the 7th, we have Usama and Augustina, happy birthday. And for Sunday, just one birthday, Margaret. Happy birthday to Margaret. So that are, those are our staff birthdays for today and this weekend. Our famous birthday is Glenn Fry, who was born November 6th, 1948 in Detroit, Michigan. Known for being one of the founding members of the Eagles who gained worldwide success and recognition in the 70s. With singles which included One of These Nights, Lying Eyes, Take It to the Limit, one that always gets stuck in my head, Hotel California, and Best of My Love. And a number of worldwide top selling albums including Desperado, One of These Nights, Hotel California, The Long Run, the Eagles were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998. So happy birthday to everyone, all of our birthdays for today and this weekend. I'm going to move over to meals for today. So I'm just going to pop this thing down for a second. And let's get into it. Our lunch for today is lox and cream cheese bagel with carrots and raisin salad. And for dessert, vanilla cream cookies. Today's dinner, we're looking at chicken noodle soup, a Salisbury steak, potato pancake, green beans, and for dessert, a jelly roll. So that sounds super good. Saturday, our lunch is Tuscan chicken, garlic mashed potatoes with broccoli florets, and dessert will be pears. The dinner will be cream of squash soup, uh, stuffed shells, and California uh, vegetable blend. And dessert will be strawberry ice cream. So that's Saturday. And then that brings us to Sunday. We have uh, entree will be oven fried chicken, sweet potato, cauliflower, and a fruit cocktail for lunch. And dinner will be split pea soup. I think I always say have to announce that I love split pea, pea, pea soup. Uh, entree will be blueberry blint souffle with baked apple slices. Sounds like a very sweet dinner. And dessert will be rice pudding. So those are your meals for today and this weekend. Again, the winds will be light and variable. So maybe if you can get outside, 
get some air, it'll be hopefully not too windy. Maybe you'll catch it on a time when it's just right. Um, so let's move to the positive news story for today. We're just doing a mini-sode for today's episode. Um, so like I was saying earlier, there's so much going on with the election. Um, we've been waiting a whole week to hear what the results are. Um, so if some of you have been standing by the TVs or not, or um, in between, um, there are so many good things that have been happening and that have taken place already from the election. So there's so much good news, and we love good news here um, on uh, Good Morning Hebrew Home. So just to start with, there, uh, there's been from a record high voter turnout to a historic number of Native Americans winning seats in the 117th con Congress, Here's a look at some of the most exciting stories that have been coming out since Tuesday. This election saw the highest voter turnout in over a century. The U US Elections Project, which tracks voter turnout, has found that more than 160 million Americans voted all in all. That's representing 66.9% of the potentially eligible voting population. This marks the largest election participation since 1900. Huge numbers of young people registered and cast their vote. More than 15 million people have turned 18 since the last presidential election, and they've been registering their vote in, their, in droves. In Idaho, Minnesota, Georgia, and Vermont, youth re voters registered exceeded 2016 numbers over by over a third, so it was higher numbers than 2016. The Center for Information Research and Civic Learning and Engagement, also known as CIRCLE, has been tracking early and absentee voting by young people aged 18 to 29. It found that more than 7 million youths across the country had already cast their ballots by October 27th, including over 4 million in 14 key states. Americans who are too young to vote signed up as poll workers. And in the 2018 midterm elections, roughly 58% of poll workers were aged 61 or older. So young citizens stepped up to volunteer, um, also to eliminate older people's risk at being exposed to COVID-19 virus. In fact, more than 37,000 young people, some of who are too young to vote, signed up to be poll workers on November 3rd through the Poll Hero Project. Foreign interference was not the issue that, that it was in 2016 election. Despite worries of disinformation and hacking attempts coming from Russia, China, and Iran, the Acting Department of Homeland Security Secretary Chad Wolf was able to confidently announce on November 3rd, we have no indications that a foreign actor has succeeded in compromising or affecting the actual votes cast in this election. According to Elizabeth Bra at Foreign Policy, Two things have changed since 2016. U.S. authorities, election machine manufacturers, and social media companies are now acutely aware of the interference risk and try to limit it. Limit it. Further U.S. Cyber Command went, said they went on offense early with defending forward strat strategy. Another great thing, Native Americans have made history with six candidates winning seats in the 117th Congress. Three women and three men have been voted in, three Democrats and three Republicans, two from Oklahoma, two from New Mexico, one from Kansas, and one from Hawaii, including tribes from Cherokee, Chickasaw, Ho-Chunk, Laguna, Jimenez, Pueblo, and one native Hawaiian. So that's made big history, everybody. Um, six, like I was saying, the six Native Americans that were headed to Congress were three women, three men, three Democrats, and three Republicans. So very, very exciting news um, for indigenous people here in America. And then we have some other things that were happening in New Mexico. New Mexico became the first state to elect all women of color 
to their House delegation. We have Yvette Harrell, Teresa Ledger, uh, Teresa Ledger Fernandez were elected and joining Deb Haaland, um, who won her re-election. Corey Bush, a nurse and single mother from Springfield, was the first black woman elected to Congress from, from the state of Missouri. And she tweeted a photo standing in front of a Shirley Chisholm, um, who, was the, who became the first African-American woman elected to US Congress in 1969. Uh, here in New York, and somebody who actually came to the home, which was super exciting, Richie Torres and Mondaire Jones both won their congressional races in New York. They will become the first openly gay black men in the United, Cong in the United States Congress. Uh, Congress now has nine LGBTQ members. Um, another thing that happened was the right to repair car law was significantly expanded in Massachusetts. Um, so in Massachusetts, there is a law called uh, being called the most advanced in the world um, was voted in. From 2022 onwards, car manufacturers in the Bay State will have to share repair data beyond just dealers to consumers and repair stores. And this law will allow car owners and local mechanics back into the repair process instead of restricting repairs to dealerships and dealership partner shops. So. That's another thing that happened. Also, Mississippi voted to legalize medical marijuana. Voters in the Magnolia State overwhelmingly approved the citizen-led initiative uh, 65, making it the 35th state to establish a medical marijuana program. In fact, states across the country are going to ease restrictions on drugs across the country. Montana, South Dakota, New Jersey, and Arizona all voted to legalize recreational weed. Uh, adults in these states will be able to legally buy recreational weed in the future with tax revenue in Arizona going to community colleges and public safety. Currently, 11 states have legalized full adult marijuana use. Um, Oregon became the first state to decriminalize the possession of small amounts of hard drugs. According to the Washington Post, such a law lays the groundwork for people with substance abuse issues to receive the treatment they need instead of time in jail. Uh, the state is also the first to legalize the therapeutic use of psychedelic mushrooms, which was interesting. Yeah, DC even voted to decriminalize plant psychedelics, including, I can't say these things, but there other, yes. It's in corn or something? No. It is? No. Cat has informed me it's psilocybin, psilocybin and ayahuasca. Oh, that's great. Right? <laughs> Lisa's not here uh, to help us say things, but I hope she's watching. Uh, Lisa, comment down below if we said it right. Uh, Oregon is not alone in what's been dubbed the psychedelic renaissance. Voters in the District of Columbia elected to decriminalize the use of magic mushrooms and other psychedelic substances with the passage of Initiative 81, making anethogens among the lowest law enforcement priorities for the Metropolitan Police Department. So there's a lot of other things that are going on outside of just um, what's happening with the presidential election. There were a bunch of things that happened across the country. Um, as always, feel free to give us a call. Any good news you've heard and would like to share on the show, you could do so again by dialing that magic number 2813. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to leave us a comment. Hit that like button or hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to tune in to Channel 8 later today. Coming up soon, we have Catholic Services with Deacon George at 11.15, your hit parade with Larry at 1.30, and Shabbat Shalom at 3 o'clock. Also, some programming news for Saturday. Uh, Rabbi Noah has started some programs. Saturdays we'll have um, Walking Shabbos, uh, Walking Shabbos Tish, from 10 to 11.45, that'll take place live on all open neighborhoods. And he'll be walking through the open floors to share some singing and words of Torah. And that's gonna be a monthly program, so keep an eye on that in your Sagely monitors. Um, and then the other thing is Havdalah, which is the Jewish ritual to conclude Shabbat, um, which will take place on channel eight in the evenings. Um, 
I'm not sure what time it starts. 5.50? Okay, 5.50 on, on Channel 8 here. And don't forget, you can catch this episode of Good Morning Hebrew Home on Channel 88 at 6.30 tonight, or you can catch all of our episodes on YouTube. Once again, this has been Olivia Cohen with Good Morning Hebrew Home. We will see you Monday, same time, same place, same channel. Cohen out. Oh